Hello, America. We're fixing to have revival now. My name is Cindy, and I invite all of America and every church and every nation and all of heaven to this revival. I will let you know I do not have a sermon prepared. This will be the Holy Spirit because I'm fixing to call upon him. So please listen to every word of all my videos because he's moving in my life. Please. And began to pray for me because many things are about to happen. You don't see nothing yet, but it's fixing to start happening. So let's have revival. Notice the signs to the left and right of the pulpit as I am a preaching and a bringing the word. And yes, I'm a woman, but a woman can minister to folks too. Women are big time missionaries all over the world and I already had a revival pastor tell me that. And he said, without women, the mission fields would be dead. So I'm thankful to be here that the Lord's called me. And here I am, I used to be children's church teacher, but now it's time for me to do the mighty work of God and let me begin. All right. I love you, America. And I'm a rooting for you that you're going to repent and change and that there'll be one billion in one day that'll come to Christ. And then within 40 days, it would be awesome to see seven and eight billion people come to Christ. Let's check it out. All right. Let me make sure I've got you all focused for the pulpit. So give me just a second to get settled. All right, let's see. I need to move you just a little bit more so that the signs can be read. All right, here we go. First, we're going to have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just come to you tonight. And Father, I've seen the living Trinity in action. I've seen your living cloud of fire speak to the Lord Jesus from out of a dream. And the Lord Jesus looked down upon me, upon earth, and he looked right at me and he didn't speak a word. He used telepathy. And the Lord Jesus spoke to the Holy Spirit on the inside of my mind and the Holy Spirit told me to go inside the building and call all the people outside to see the living cloud of fire the Lord Jesus a comet frozen in the holy presence of God in heaven with a full moon sitting to the left of it and father I pray that you draw everyone every tribe every tongue on a YouTube channel to this great almighty revival that's earthwide. It's for America because this comet is going to affect America really in a, in a bad way. But these are the days of Jonah and if we repent, never know, you might move it off far to the north or south instead of heading straight toward the, from the east to the west. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd come. I know that you are the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, of the person of the Trinity. And then I know that there is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is unnumberable. There cannot be a number that can contain the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is for anyone that will receive Christ, the Holy Ghost will come inside of you and live in you. And I believe that the Holy Spirit lives to and fro from the Father's presence in heaven, back and forth all across the earth. And that's how God is omnipresent throughout all Christians, throughout all tongue and all people. And he's present even without there being a soul saved. He's present through the Holy Spirit being omnipresent. And um, 
So I call upon you, Holy Spirit. Don't have a sermon prepared, but the Lord's given me the message to see to it that it gets preached. So here I am, and I praise you, Father, with all my heart and soul for what you're doing in me. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. Wash my heart clean now tonight. Cover me in the blood of Jesus and help me to do the mighty job for you, Lord. I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name and sink this message deep in the hearts and souls of every saint, every pastor, every shepherd, every priest, every church member. Many are in there without being saved. They're just coming to be churchy. Many are saved, Lord, but they're weak and they don't know how to tell their loved ones about Jesus. Will you help them tonight to get that strength? And will you help the sinner to get down on their knees and repent and ask Jesus to come help them to believe, help them with their unbelief, help them to accept him that he did die on the cross and let me begin to preach and tell the story now. We've got much work to do, Father. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would go to and fro throughout the earth and gather together where there are more than two or three in your presence listening to this revival, that your Spirit might move in them, Lord, and draw many billions to yourself. And I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to have revival on YouTube live all across the earth to everyone that the Lord God of heaven and earth draws to this channel. It's up to you as the individual, the saint or the sinner, to click on the channel and watch it and listen to the many things that God has showed me on every video and then tell your family and friends through Facebook, texting, emails, phone calls, visits. Many of you have lost family members and you don't know how to lead them to Christ. What if we only had 40 days and 40 nights and judgment comes? Please think about that message very seriously. Tonight we will have the reading of the word from Revelations 3, the message to Sardis. It says, To the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain which were about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. The church and all of God's people on the earth, the backsliders, have all forgotten how to repent. Truly repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments. And I will not erase his name from the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Holy Spirit, I praise you. I feel your power tonight. Henry Blackaby says that not no one can preach the word of God out of their own flesh, their own desires, because it's just not there. It's the power of God that does these things. So believe if you will. Or believe not. 
and I feel for you if you believe not and you turn the video off and you don't tell anybody about it God is watching now then I'm going to read a verse to you and I'm going to share with you a dream it says therefore if you do not wake up O church O sinner I will come like a thief and you will not know what hour I will come to you I tell you right now this very day I have seen stars fall from heaven down to the earth they came from the east and the west they were not all cast the same direction I have learned that those are angels guiding those stars will there be one tonight that has your name on it I hope not I pray not I pray that you would repent and turn from your ways I must confess to you that God gave me a dream. In the dream, I'm in a building. I just came into the dream. I'm carrying a huge flat screen TV. And there are three of us carrying it. That's how big it is. It's the biggest flat screen you can buy on planet Earth. And it was heavy. I don't know these people, I'm not allowed to see their faces, but they helped me carry it. We set it down on a table. As soon as I let my hands off of the big flat screen TV, I am aware of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in my mind. John 6 and 44 says that no one can come to the Father, not unless he draws you. Well, the Holy Spirit is the one that is always drawing us to do good and to turn from evil. He always warns us when we're going to do something like steal a simple ink pen. He'll warn us, but if we don't turn, then we slowly but surely more and more and more and more every day, we harden our hearts. And then, wow, um, a new thing begins to happen when your heart hardens. So let me move on. In the dream, the Holy Spirit guided me to go outside on the porch of this building. And I did. And I went and I opened the door. I went outside. And I could not help but see instantly up in the heavens to the right of where I was standing was an almighty cloud of living fire none like I've ever seen before in my life no cloud can compare to it there are clouds that can compare to the color but the color only I've not ever seen a fire like this in my life there were arteries flowing to and fro inside the living cloud they were blue and red in color like we have as humans and I didn't understand that, but I just knew that this cloud was alive. Cannot God create a living cloud to contain his bright light so that I might not die in the dream? Yes, he can. Now, at the top of this living cloud of fire was two uh, gigantic white arteries, and they flowed with great movement in, the, in and out of this cloud from the center of this cloud and I figure God was in the center of that cloud in his holy presence and these uh, arteries um, were moving in action to be surrounding him and protecting me that's the way I have to view it so then to the left of the living cloud of fire was a cloud and the Lord Jesus, they, I just know it was him. There was only one man standing on it, and he was wearing bright white arraignment. He had hair color, the color of mine, but just a little bit darker with no blonde tips. And it was about shoulder length in the dream. Now, they were close enough like a super red blood moon would be to me upon the earth. Super close. 
so uh, not very far away. Kind of like a, a blimp would be right there in the heavens, okay? There was no sound whatsoever, but the Lord Jesus would look to the living cloud of fire, and he would listen, and then he would talk, and listen some more, and then he didn't say anything, and he looked down upon the earth, he looked directly at me. He didn't look to the left, where Cindy, or look to the right, where Cindy. He knew exactly where I was, where I was standing, and that we were going to have a conversation. Now then, you'll get to see the living trinity in action. As I'm looking at the Lord Jesus from the porch down there on earth, the Lord Jesus is looking at me. And he don't speak a word. He uses telepathy. And the power of his visions to my eyeballs was very strong. And all of a sudden, I knew that he was speaking to the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. It was a great awakening happening physically in my body. And a peace come over me. But yet, uh, I just, I don't know how to explain it. That was just like this uh, incredible energy. And the Holy Spirit said, go inside the building and call all the people out here. Well, I've learned that you and all America and every church and every nation is all the people. Yes, I'm a woman. And if God wants me to take on the job, I'm going to take on the job. Anyway, I go in the building and I get all the people and I bring them outside. And they all gathered on a porch. This porch was at least as big as this entire huge pulpit up here. Hundreds of people gathered on this, this porch. And they all saw the same thing that I saw. They could see it. And they were all in awe. And I didn't recognize any of them because I wasn't allowed to see their faces. I only could see their, their bodies from... Uh, like shoulder height down I wasn't allowed to engage in faces because that was not for me to engage in in this particular dream was I was a, a message deliverer only and that was God's only focus not to friendship fellowship I was to deliver a message so all the people are standing there we're all looking in awe to the left of the Lord Jesus Christ in the heavens was an almighty planet-sized comet frozen in God's holy presence in the heavens, standing still along with a full moon to the left of it. Left-hand corner is missing off the moon like something hit it, but I don't know. The comet, I'll give you a description of it. The color of it was on fire with black pits all in it. Okay? The moon was just a bright and luminous white like it always is. It had light. Um, I then was told by the Holy Spirit to go back inside the building. But after this, the people were all on the porch. And up in the heavens, the Lord Jesus turned to the cloud again because God started talking to him again. And the Lord Jesus listen and then he spoke some more to the father and then he listened some more and then he turned back and he looked at me on the earth and again I felt this this energy come over me and the Holy Spirit spoke to me in my mind again and this is what he said he said now go back inside the building and go find go find the TV so I thought well <laughs> it's, it's kind of awesome out here I don't understand why I need to go look for that TV. I, I didn't find the TV to be important. and uh, But I understood the book of Numbers. Uh, you shouldn't complain when God has an assignment for you. You should just do it. And so I knew that. And so I obeyed the Holy Spirit. I opened the door and I went back inside the building. I searched to the north, I searched to the south, I searched to the east, I searched to the west. I, I went to the windows in the back of the building and I looked all out the windows to the left and to the right and I looked at every car and I, I, I 
couldn't find no people carrying a TV. I couldn't find the TV anywhere. I went back even to the table that had the TV set down on it. That TV was not nowhere to be found. And those people was a lot of people. It took them a few minutes to get out on the porch. But there were so many people that came out. There was nobody left inside the building. And by the time Jesus told the Holy Spirit to tell me to go back inside the building, it was only a matter of a few minutes. This TV would have had to have had three people pick it up and carry it out. And there would have had to have been people in there that would have known that we went out on the porch so that it was up for grabs to steal. Okay, now then I want to read this Bible verse again and you listen to it and it is a perfect pattern, a perfect fit. So remember what you have received and heard tonight and keep it and repent. Stop judging your brother and your sister about what they're doing or what they're not doing. Stop doing that. Stop judging your neighbor. Stop looking at somebody because they have a disease and they don't look so pretty. It's for God to judge and God only. Stop looking at your neighbor that's poor, that's got holes in their blue jeans or they drink beer. Or maybe the neighbor's daughter dresses in too short of clothes. Love them just as they are. Whether they are gay or homosexual, lesbians, or whether they just aborted a little tiny baby, they need God's love or they're not going to make it to heaven. So let me read this. It says, so remember what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. And don't just repent sitting down. Get up and get to the altars. We must learn to be humble. We're talking about a holy God. Doesn't it say every knee shall bow? What happened to you? No one bows anymore. How are we going to move the church if we don't get up out of the church seat? And move to the altar and show the rest of them that we're going to move. Are you ashamed of getting to the altar? Do you feel you're too old to get to the altar? You don't have to come to this altar to bow down if you're old. You can bow down right where you're at. Now some of you are very disabled. And you're very near death. God understands that. But a lot of you know that you can get down, but you won't get down because you don't want to. You feel like you're all right living the way you are. Now, some of you get on your knees in private only, and that's good. Don't get me wrong. But if we don't do something to help the church cry out and move, we're never going to have revival. We can keep praying and praying and praying. And what God is looking for is he's looking for a movement. I got something for you he just gave me. Go on YouTube and type in Lonnie Riley from the Experiencing God videos. But you can just type in his name. Look what God did to the, the hometown of Lynch, Kentucky, of where he lives at. Those people were without jobs, without food, didn't have clothes hardly, no shoes for their kids. Those people went to a park to, to have a, a prayer meeting, and they ended up all laying out on the grass all over the grounds of this park. And they cried out to God, on their backs, on their bellies, some of them on their knees. And God moved in that city and he has radically changed it through Lonnie Riley because Ronnie Riley was just tired and he gave up. And he didn't want to be a pastor anymore because people in the church were mistreating him. And so you check out that video and look and see what God done in his life 
just like he's doing in my life. Yeah, he'll do it in your life. Okay? But anyway, let me get back to the, the Bible lesson here. Like I said, this was not a prepared sermon. I was to come in the Spirit and that God would feed me the message. So remember, what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. I testify that God showed me why that TV was missing. I testify to you through the Holy Ghost and I. He lives in me and him and I both have this right hand up. And he's full of truth. And I testify to you that I learned through much prayer why that TV was missing. Because I testify that the God of heaven has created a comet. He uses it for his wrath. And he's been using it all along. And he probably created it before Noah's day. I don't know. That's not written anywhere in scripture. I do have a scripture that shows me that talks about it. And I'll read that in a minute. But I'm telling you, I've seen this comet many times in many dreams and it's coming and I'll tell you where it's at right now it's on the west side of the earth and it's heading straight towards Easter Sunday April the 1st 2018 and the reason I know that is because the father on November the 21st of 2018 he answered my prayer and right after the inauguration in November of last year, when Trump did get elected, well, in January, I was seeking out a job at Bucky's. 